Welcome back to the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel. In today's video, we have my first cover up slash non swimwear style, and it's called the test skirt. This one is really trendy right now. And the best part of it is that it's very, very easy to make. Like I'm talking, there are a total of six seams in this entire tutorial. So first let's go through our materials. First thing that I wanna mention is that you do not need swimwear elastic for this style. So if you do see that that's missing, that is on purpose. You will need swimwear fabric for this tutorial. And depending on what size you're making, you'll need anywhere from two thirds of a yard up to a full yard. I'd say just have a yard to be safe. Also those fabric measurements are for just one layer of fabric. This tutorial is just one layer. I tried it out with two and doing a reversible style and you definitely could still do that. But for me, it just got kind of bulky and took away from the cover up feel of it. One tool that's gonna be very helpful in this tutorial is a loop turner. If you don't have one, you can use a safety pin instead. We're gonna be using this tool at the very end and it's very helpful when you're trying to thread a string through a drawstring channel. You will need a regular sewing machine and by that I mean a machine that can do a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. There is an option to use a serger, but just for one part of the tutorial. So you will need at least a regular machine. Then of course, you're gonna need some basic sewing supplies like a cutting tool, thread, scissors, then of course, last but not least, in fact, kind of the most important material of this whole thing is the pattern for the test skirt, which is available now at edgewaterav.com. Moving on to cutting our pieces, you're gonna notice right away that the pattern says to cut on the fold. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. If you're unfamiliar with that term and what it means, basically it just means we're gonna be folding our fabric in half and cutting through two layers of fabric at once. So you're gonna align the pattern where it says cut on the fold, and you're gonna align that edge alongside the folded edge of that fabric. Then you're gonna use your cutting tool and you're gonna cut along every edge except where that fold is. You don't need to worry about that. So once you're finished cutting, you're gonna see that we have a nice symmetrical piece. The last thing we're gonna to need to cut is a strap, and I do have measurements for that included inside the pattern. So now we can put this thing together. Our first objective in the construction of this skirt is to first finish off the raw edges of the waistline and the bottom edge. And this is a bit of an unusual first step for any of my tutorials. And the reason for that is if we don't finish off these raw edges now, they're gonna be hard to access once we have the skirt sewn together. There are so many ways that you can finish off these raw edges, but today we're just gonna talk about three different ways that you can do this. Number one is with a serger. You're gonna use a three thread overlock stitch or some type of rolled hem. So this is what I chose to do when filming. And I just went down to a three thread overlock stitch and played with my settings to get more of a discreet look. Here are what those settings look like for my baby lock evolution. But if you have a different machine, yours will probably be different. And with this method, all you're really doing is just sewing right on top of that raw edge. And the intention here is to give it more of a finished look instead of just leaving it untouched. Up to you whether you think it actually looks finished. Obviously using matching thread would help a lot, but this is one way that you can do it. So if you want something that's more finished, you could do this option number two. Number two is using a zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine and actually hemming that edge. So this ended up being my favorite way. It does take a little bit longer, but I just think it turned out really clean looking and it's definitely the most professional of all the options in my opinion. This is a pretty basic sewing skill, just sewing a hem. I'm only folding it over once and then sewing it. And I'm also, I'm operating from the wrong side of the garment. And if you notice that your hem is starting to bubble out, it does help if you sew a little bit further away from the edge. Now I thought this would be a lot harder than it ended up being. And I don't know if I've just like had so much practice lately that it was super easy, but I was pleasantly surprised. I thought that this curved hem would give me a lot more trouble but through those two layers of swimwear fabric with a nice zigzag stitch that isn't too close together, it was pretty easy. Also, just so you know that if you do choose to do method two, there is not seam allowance included on the top or bottom edge, and that's because of the other methods to finish it. And so in theory, you could add a little bit more to account for that hem. I didn't. 
of course. And in the end, I'm gonna be modeling this green skirt that I'm working with. And that's the one that I didn't add seam allowance so you can see how it looks. So the final option for finishing this is just to do nothing. Swimmer fabric doesn't fray. So in theory, you could just leave it. It's not the most finished look out there, but if you're wanting something quick and easy, then that's definitely an option. In summary, the whole step one is to finish off the waist and the bottom edge, whichever way you want to do that. Once that is done, you will match your skirt with right sides together and align it along the two raw edges that we have left. Get some clips out if needed. Now there is half an inch of seam allowance added right here. So your goal is going to be to sew a straight line all the way down half an inch in. And I'm just using a regular straight stitch for this, paying close attention at the very beginning and the very end to make sure that my skirt is lined up perfectly. So now we have a full skirt and that means we just have three seams left. Two of those seams are going to be to sew down that excess fabric that we left as allowance. And we're gonna sew that down to make our drawstring channels. So I guess technically it's not really allowance cause we are needing to use it, but take that as you will. So going back in with the straight stitch again, I'm going to hold my channel down and just stitch that thing all the way top to bottom. And you're gonna be doing that with both of the channels. Depending on how wide or narrow you want that channel to be, uh, just get closer or further from that center seam. I like to sew just about a quarter inch or so away from the center. Now we just have one mandatory seam left and that is to sew our strap. I sew a lot of straps on this channel so you probably already know the deal. You're gonna fold your strap in half lengthwise and sew along the raw edge. For this one, you do not need elastic. Take a loop turner and get that strap all the way to the right side. Once your strap is finished, it's time to run it through the drawstring channels. I used my loop turner for this. Again, it makes it so much quicker and easier. So there is one more stitch, but this one is optional. I do think that it helps keep the shape. So keep watching and just see if you want to do this. So I decided to cut my drawstring in half at the top, and then I used a straight stitch just straight on top to the strap channels to cap them off. This will keep those drawstrings secure in place. And what's nice is you can go back and trim the excess, which leaves a nice clean look. I like doing this because otherwise that drawstring is pulling down at the top. And so this mitigates that just a tiny bit, but most importantly, it helps prevent those strings inside the channel from getting too twisted. So with that, here is the completed Tess skirt. Now I did finish up that yellow piece that I was working on for this whole video, but I decided to make some significant changes to the length of the pattern. And so now I'm showing you the final version. You might still have some questions on this style and for more details, I do suggest referring to the written directions. All right, I'll see you in the next video.